blowing in last night. Uh, 170 year record. Record I like coal. I like coal for a couple of days. It'll be good. It'll be good. So, um, pig roast. Rescheduled pig roast is this Thursday. Uh, anytime, three in the afternoon till whenever. Um, yes, it's going to be a little cooler, uh, but we will have a bonfire. Obviously, serving tons of food, burgers, dogs, wings. So, come on out. Just dress it up a little bit, but uh, with the bonfire, should be great out there. So, same place, Bill's house. Um, this Thursday, the 14th, starting at 3. We'll see you out there. All right. Um, what do you think? What do you think, market? A lot of lookers. What does that mean? That means I'm not seeing contracts as fast, but a lot of shipments. Up from a week or two ago? Seems like it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's busy. It does. So, Again, I've said it many times. This this time of the year is my favorite time of year as a realtor. Uh, I think it's highly underrated. People forget about the fall. Um, just a lot of business happens pretty much September 15th on to December 15th. Phil. Yeah, we have a listing in 30328 Sandy Springs, and it's the price is a tad high. And uh, we were talking to our sellers because we have very little showings. And the seller said to us, well, our friend told us that nobody's really looking. They're, they, and uh, the market's dead. Their friend told them. <laughs> so, you know, we know it's a little slower. We do have some challenges. You know, we're seeing some indicators of, uh, of, of it not being as robust as it was previously. But I went back and I went into MLS and I searched that price category in that area and I looked at the actives, <coughs> pendings, and solds, and there was a real healthy mix of pendings to solds. Like if there was 25 actives in what I searched in that area, there was like eight to 10 pendings. And in the last 60 days, there was about um, eight to 10 solds. So, you know, we sent that over to the client, but the reality is, is look at the data. I mean, there still is a ton of activity, even though we are seeing signs of slowdown in certain areas. Correct. So why do you think? Why, why do you think, I mean, yesterday we had 14 contracts in. I mean, that's that's a great day any month of the year. Why, what do you attribute this to? People still want to take advantage of those interest rates. Rates are incredible, yeah. right? Yeah. I think, I think there's customers. a Get it in, yeah. There's also a perspective or, or a thought process that this is the off time of the year. I might be able to get a better deal. Mm -hmm. They're trying to see if they can do that. All right. Stock market still a high. People confident with money. Right. So I agree. And I think I said last week this a, this is a this is a challenging time of year to be a realtor. And then, in my opinion, you have three jobs right now until probably January. Fifth. So we're still doing our best to win this year, right? We still have goals for 2019. We're still pushing hard to the finish line for this year. But as Keller Williams has taught us for a long time, what you do right now, especially in your lead gen, shows up three months from now, right? Mm -hmm. So you better be working on next year now too. Okay, so now you have two full-time jobs, and pretty soon you're going to, I don't know, we're two weeks away from Thanksgiving holidays, you have a third. We all have families and holidays and gifts, so it, it is a time, it's a, mentally, you need to gear up. I mean, this is, this is the two months that really are your biggest effort, I think, of the whole year. And if, you, if you're aware of that and you accept that and come to peace with that, it's all fine. So, um, but yeah, it, it's very busy time of year for sure. We, we need to already be getting close to deciding on what, what our goals are next year, what we're going to do. If we're changing our goals, which most people do, we're, we're going to have to do something different, right? Especially if it, well, I think most people have a higher number. So, I mean, what is working this year? What's not working this year? Let's up what's working. Let's 
get less lessen what's not working, maybe have a few new ideas, but that, that should be a lot of your thought process a lot of the day right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a very active time. Uh, Renee, so Renee requested to go first. She's wearing today her, <laughs> her cloth uh, Cleopatra necklace, <laughs> a different look, but we're going to... So my friend it. makes jewelry, and I got suckered in buying that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Renee is with Danik, our 20-year Twenty like year alliance uh, <laughs> lender, uh, <laughs> closing uh, attorney. So what do you got? What's happening? Good morning. So we've had a lot of requests lately for people that have closed earlier in the year and the property tax bill was wildly different than what we prorated on at closing. For some reason this year it seems to be um, happening a lot more than in previous years. So what to do if that happens? The buyers and sellers, when they sign the signature page of the settlement statement at closing, there is a paragraph in there where they agree to reprorate the taxes if they turn out to be different than what we estimated on at closing. Um, we had one recently, I mean, it was the difference due to one of the parties was about $1,500. So depending on the time of the year they close and how much it goes up or down, it can be a significant amount. So for you and your clients, we are happy to help facilitate getting this done between the buyers and the sellers. What we do is we'll put a letter together, we'll attach the settlement statement, the old one, and we'll do a new one that shows what the accurate proration should have been. Send a letter telling them, you know, who owes what to who. Um, Debbie requested though that when, when I tell you all this, to tell you that she can't, she's real fast, at a lot of things, but this does take a minute. So it, if you talk to us, you know, we'll get it done, you know, usually same business day, um, but it does take a minute to gather all the information. But we're happy to help with your clients. Um, like I said, it seems to have been happening a lot more this year than in previous years. So if your clients call you about that, just send them over to us. We'll pull all the information. I think we did it for one of Arden's clients just last week, um, and we'll take care of it for you. Yes? Is it happening in one county more than another? Um, I, I've seen I've seen DeKalb and Fulton and kind of all over. I mean, it's just you know some of it. I think one was a new construction where the county probably considered it more built on January first than it really was. You know, it's just it's just different factors, and some of it's just that um, you know the tax bill just just happened to go up. They just re the county hit that property and reassessed it, and it just went up considerably. Any other questions? It's really nice of you to do. Mm -hmm. It's not, is this, Debbie, Debbie also said to make sure I tell you it is a secret. Don't tell <laughs> everybody. <laughs> Just do it for y'all. Don't spread it around. There's, there's nothing you can do to force them to pay it. No, I mean, that's, this is the problem. You know, we'll send a letter, you know, we, we may even send like a second stern reminder, but at the end of the day, if, if, the people won't pay it. The option is to take them to small to file a claim with small claims court. The good news is, is you have all the paperwork. It's kind of a slam dunk, but you know, most people, depending, unless it's a large amount, most people aren't going to follow through and do it. But I, I'd say in most of the cases, you know, people understand that they owe the money and they'll send it, send it back. Yes. Um, I just want to add to your point. Um, please also just make sure that the. Assessments were done right. I actually just had a situation I, I spoke a few weeks ago mm -hmm. where the um, I sold a property and the Fulton County the City of Atlanta Assessor appraised the property for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars more than what we were on the contract for. And even though we were past the um, <clears throat> time where you can go and um, dispute it, what I did was was we got a copy of the appraisal from the uh, current owner, which was the buyer at the time. And we had the hood, and so I was able to go down to the um, Fulton County Board of Assessors, take all that information, and they actually are going to um, recalculate the assessment based on because they was over by like two thousand square feet. So basically, the, the property taxes were oh, nice. say they were like three thousand, four thousand when they came out. It was like seven thousand dollars. So the difference was like I would have to have paid, or the seller would have to have paid like two thousand dollars additional. 
So we was able to get down there and they actually, or they just sent an email actually two days ago saying they're reassessing it and it's going from the 21st is when they'll Oh, that's great. If they, cause so, if they make an actual mistake, they will. If, so, it's, they, you just can't go back late in the game if it's just based on the value. Right. All right, anything else? Thank you for all your contracts coming in. We love being busy at the end of the year, so we appreciate your business. Thank you. Thank you. So this is uh, easily a place that we can add value uh, to our clients and that go back over all your closing and this year and determine uh, if people are owed money. You're a superhero. I mean, if you call up and go, I think, you know, you're owed $1,200. Whenever you can make people money in this business, save people money, mm -hmm. make their home more efficient, you are moving up the charts. So do that. Go back over all your closings. It's an easy way to uh, be a hero to your clients. So if it's for $100, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, we had, I had a client that tried to come back and ask for 100 bucks. Well, you can do it, but yeah, yeah. But I would go through and try to determine that. Okay, so again, back to your three jobs. Um, and I told you last um, last week, the most important time of the year for touching Keller Williams advocates touching your database 33 times a year. We're up to 36 times a year now. But really, the key, the four key to me are coming up between. December 10th and January 10th. So, in my opinion, the biggest time of the year for pent-up demand is right after the first of the year. As we get closer and closer to the holidays, a lot of people who want to buy have made it a New Year's resolution. I'll wait till after the holidays, and boom, all of a sudden, the phone just starts ringing um, like crazy. I t I, in my 15 years selling, I told you, 14 of my 15 years, I put more things under contract in February than any month just because they started looking in January we went under contract February. So we need to be top of mind. We need to be top of mind. So four touches between the 10th of December and January 10th. They can be any form you want. They can be a holiday card. Uh, some people give out pies. It could be um, call, text, email. Think of four. Have them all ready. Know the dates you're going to do them. Get, get that done. We want when that demand hits that they're very aware of what you did. What is up? Okay. All right, Stacy, you got some awards for us today? I do. We have some agents we want to celebrate and applaud. I'm looking for, to see if certain people are in the room. Not yet, but. Um, so we, we celebrate the first dollar in real estate. That means you had your first closing. We, the staff, got a little behind on this, so we have a few months' worth of apologies from take ownership. But now this is not a, a new agent, but I would like to award Miss Faith Brown her first dollar in real estate. Okay. Probably way overdue, we have our our senior friend, John Green Sr. I have one for Gerard Davis, looking very bad. have one for James, a.k.a. Jim Jinks. And for... Again, not the first dollar she earned, but with us, <laughs> Dolores Voorhees. <laughs> All right, then we've had <laughs> actually two at night classes coming. Go. <laughs> so we um, want to acknowledge those who have completed a night. Erica Ariola. <laughs> John Green again. Eliza Hartrow. And Eva Coney. Oh, there you are. And Rick Rolator. Okay. I, uh, uh, somebody just slipped in. Chanel Murphy. 
also get both of our Thank you, Stacy. So let's talk a little just proof. Again, I think the top agents understand how transactions work, what moves the transaction forward, what gets people comfortable to make a decision and to move on to the next step of the deal. And we have to get very good at providing proof because I think that's what a lot of times you can say something, but do you really believe it, okay? Um, and I think good, good agents understand the co-op agent, where their mind is, and yes, from our perspective, it appears this way, but I'm, I understand you might doubt, and if I go ahead and provide proof, it moves us past that step. So easily, the number one thing you can say is, and I've, it, it's amazing just this is followed as little as is, but get things in writing, okay? You don't know how many things come across my desk. We agreed. Okay, stop. Where's a piece of paper? Oh, no, not in writing. Your, your, your chances have just diminished greatly. Whenever you agree on something, just find a nice way to say, can you send me an email saying that? It's important. So here's an example, okay? Agent of ours, we've had uh, a, a person out there blowing up the front desk, okay? Calling repeatedly. And their concern was that his contract, I don't think he had an agent, his contract was not presented on our agent's listing. Okay? Three times a day, minimum. Okay? All I, I ask our agent, just get your seller to send a text or email stating that he has seen this guy's contract, name his name, on this property. Here's what I got. To whom it may concern. <laughs> Our agent and I discussed all the available opportunities and I decided to go with DJ's offer. Okay, this guy doesn't know who did. Thanks. Okay, but he's talking about what? He knew what he was talking about. Okay, but do you understand if we send to this to this person yeah. this has what what are we what are we missing here? The golf course. <laughs> For you to have your seller sign the form that says they are not going to counter your particular offer, and then therefore you've got proof and everybody knows that. Yes. Really helpful when we have multiple yeah, offers. It's to reject offer. Right. Yeah. It's very important to just have everyone feel like, and it's good for your career, that no one thinks that Kevin didn't present my offer. So have them sign something they've seen it but you can see here even after requested we don't have the, the seller's name on here mm -hmm. right I mean I don't know who sent this this could be our agent sending this yeah. mm -hmm. so um, again there's a lot of places for proof obviously Renee they, their whole they don't do anything without proof right I mean that's what that's why we have closing attorneys was that, an email or text? that was a tax see but I wouldn't want to give my clients phone number to the other party either you're forwarding the text. Well, it's not all there. Anyway, that's, that's a whole different point. Okay, so proof, um, we just talked about proof the seller saw the offer. Mm -hmm. Important to do. What other places are good for proof? And, and this is for our benefit. Repairs. Repairs. Yeah. Receipts. Repairs. Repairs. Okay. And, and, and I, I, I'm hearing a lot of stories where <clears throat> Day before closing, repairs weren't done. Go to closing, repairs weren't done. Well, what, what's an easy way to solve? I mean, if, you, if it's your buyer, how do you? I mean, we we got to do walkthroughs, right? We got to do walkthroughs. But four days before closing, what? I know what I would do. What, what do we do? Get on the phone with that agent. Yeah, before I even right, and what yeah. do we do? Yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, share the right? Yeah, share the list. Right. Meet them at the house. Yeah. Okay. Receipts are good. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's, I'm even talking about from our side. So how do we make things go easy from our side? We provide proof. So just to have the other side one step more done, we were going to fix these three things. What's the, what do we do four days before closing without asking what the other side? Photograph and a receipt of the repair. There you go. I, I'm telling you, there's a lot of bad things about these things, but there's a lot of great things about these things. And one thing is, just take a picture of the repair. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. How simple. It's amazing. I mean, you know I own rental properties. It's so easy just to, when I have vendors out there to go send me a picture when you're done. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they're cutting the grass, you know? Mm -hmm. it, it's fantastic. So they'll love that. Hey, here's a picture of this repair, this repair, this repair. Thank you very much. You made me look like a hero to my clients. Okay, I don't have to just go, yeah, they've done them. <coughs> Here you go. Yeah. Right? Receipts too. There we go. And Another. it didn't cost anything. Correct. Um, Another example, escalation clauses. When you want to you agree to that, you want to see how, why I have to go over. So I want to see that contract. Correct. Another good one. Here's another one too that'll that'll get you a lot of uh, good good juice and mo mojo. So your listing, instead of just going, I caught you know, a lot of sellers are a little anxious, before, like they they hadn't even locked the door two minutes. What the buyer think, right? <laughs> so instead of just going, I talked to the other agent and they said this. How, how can we up that? Have them email us their comments. Exactly. Kevin, would you mind just emailing me that, or even texting me that, okay? If we can provide proof from a third party that here it is, <coughs> they, not just saying they said that, but here is what they said, that's going to help a lot. Because it's not us saying, they, they thought your carpet was just hideous. I mean, because they even if you're telling your seller that, that someone else said that, they're kind of thinking that you're saying that, right? Mm -hmm. Versus, you know, Katie's telling you this. Yeah. I'd like to see the commission up front. And I'd like to see somebody put it in writing what the commission is on the deal before I start offering or, you know, if I'm representing the buyer. Commercial. Well, <laughs> you're a smart person. So <laughs> you're talking about getting something in writing. If I don't have that, then, you know, they can just arbitrarily assign whatever commission they want after the fact. Right. I mean, your, your gig's a little different with commercial, yeah. but it's shocking how many people, they, they write the contract, they never send any part of the commission thing. I mean, it's three days before closing. Huh? We need to tell the attorney. Hey, they have no clue. Right. Writing, writing, writing is always a good idea to print off a copy of the MLS listing showing what the commission was on the day you made the offer. If they change it later, you know, you make a picture of the MLS showing this. It was off of three Yeah. Exactly. Proof is good. It will help you out a ton. Different subject. I know we're in the world of social networking, Facebooking, just this happens at all companies, all people. I, I don't know why that everyone, because you can type your opinion that we all think we're Pulitzer Prize winning writers and that <laughs> our opinion is actually significant, but realize that anything you post represents this office and it represents KW. So just be careful. I mean, it, it, this is not a forum to just just <coughs> completely un, un, un what? Exactly. I mean, the, the, it's it's going to kill your career. I mean, I, what you think about the president or anything has is if you're going negative, it, there's, believe me, half the people, if you don't like the Democrats and you post heavy words with that, you're never going to have a Democratic client again. Or if you don't like the Republicans, or you don't like this phase of that, that's not what we post. It, it's just killing, killing, and it's shocking <coughs> the stuff you see out there. So just be careful. That's not the place that we... In private, if you want to talk to your friends, it's, but it, it's no good. It's, it's just no good for anything. So be real careful. All right, Ben's cat. What you got? Sure. So 
Felix, another great breakfast. Thank Tim you. Tim Warranty. Thank you. Thank you. Best dressed man in the business. Thank you. Thank you. Um, super excited because we have a brand new product. And how do we make something good better? Well, they just managed to do that. The, the, the most important thing is that we kept the coverage, which is unmatched in the industry for air conditioning, for refrigerant, including Freon. That was one of my concerns when we knew we were coming with a new product because, as you may or may not know, the uh, production of Freon R22 is going down starting the 1st of January of 2020, what, eight weeks from now? Uh, but the government has banned production of anything to support Freon out there four or five years ago. So there's no more parts being made for our air conditioners in most of our homes. Unless you have a brand new air conditioner or a two-year-old air conditioner, anything over that probably works with Freon. So the important thing is we kept that coverage. And I'll talk about Freon and just another reminder about the importance of that. The uh, new coverage has something that we've never done before, lock and hardware. We were the last warranty company to cover lock and hardware, but what we did, no one else has done in the past. We are automatically given with either one of our uh, coverages. We're given a hundred dollars credit, up to a hundred dollar credit to the clients within the first 45 days of the warranty going into effect. So this is how it works with the other home warranty companies. You want a locksmith, you call in, file a claim, they dispatch a service provider, that is, you're gonna pay the service fee, they do the locking, whatever, done, great. With us, you don't have to do any of that. The client has up to 45 days to buy the locks, call their own locksmith, do their work, and turn that receipt in. They go online, put that receipt in, as we, again, it's 45 days, within 45 days, and they get a check back to up to $100. If you buy, if you buy a fancy lock for $300, we'll give you $100. If you get a locksmith that charges $85, we'll give you $85. So that's huge, okay? And then the, uh, the rest of the product is just pretty much the same, which was uh, fantastic. But let me just talk about Freon and the importance for you. I'll be here, hopefully, I'll be here a year <coughs> from now, and you're gonna see a lot of people panicking in this room because the supply of Freon, we had a very hot summer in the Southeast, not just in Atlanta. That meant a lot of Freon, of consumption of Freon R22. So the production is down, the consumption <coughs> is up. Initially they thought it was gonna be Freon out there for a couple of years. I do not know, I'm not in that business, but my understanding is less, they're anticipating less Freon out there than, you know, to go over one and a half years. So, one pound of Freon, two to three hundred dollars. Five, five, five pounds is an average of Freon that you need in a particular unit. That's a thousand dollars. We see a lot of bills in the seven, eight, nine hundred, a thousand, twelve hundred dollars just for Freon. If you do not have a home warranty, or if your clients do not have a home warranty, that's money out of your pocket. If you have a home warranty like this one that has no limits and the most important thing, no caps on the pound of refrigerant, including Freon, you pay nothing but that service fee. <coughs> Two questions that you want to ask your, war your warranty companies, and yes, it is time to buy home warranties, you know, because <coughs> this is going to protect you and your clients. And you were talking about something of value when you're making those, what, 36 touches? This is something of value. Yeah. You can call your client and tell them, are you clients that you haven't talked to in two years? Right. You may be a little, oh, I'm, I don't want to call someone I haven't talked to in two years. Call them because you're going to give them information of value. I'll be able to, I'll be glad to send you a link that you can pass on to your clients that tells them exactly what's going on with the refrigerant and how that is going to impact them. That's information of value. That's something that you, you, you can be their hero. And trust me, when we cannot re but uh, we, we cannot repair the air conditioning units, we have to, and 210 will replace that. So not only are we concerned about the Freon, but sooner or later, most of our units are not gonna be able to retrofit to accommodate Huron, which is the new environmentally friendly uh, refrigerant, and they will have to be changed. So if you never thought about a home warranty, for you, your personal home, this is the time. Please do not wait till November of next year uh, the prices might have gone higher, which by the way, for agents, we cannot, we do not give any discounts where we fix this price for your personal property. 
If you get the Supreme the Standard, you're locked into that price for as long as you keep our home warranties. So, Felix, if you send me the link, I'll great. send it to the whole office. Awesome, great. It's, it's just a link, it's like a flyer, and it gives some detail of what's going to happen. If, if nothing else, at least forward that link to your clients and be given that kind of information. Sorry. Excellent. Okay, good. No, that's a great touch. Um, Mike, Mike Spire wants your home warranty. Can I have that? So I'm yes. I'll contact you later today. To yes, no problem. Okay. And uh, this time our, our business card is in, in front of the brochure, and then we have the Keller Williams logo for you guys. Yep. We have Woo! this. I'm going to send you yes. the uh, PDF version of this as well. And I'm here. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those questions. Thank okay. you. Great. Thank you. Important topic. Hey, Ernie, Brad. Yeah. No, I don't want to talk about your kid. Let's talk free. Okay, let's, let's talk about free. <laughs> <Let's talk about laughs> no, no, it, it's important. Um, this is a topic that will be. It's pretty important to let people know. Now, I yep. told y'all for years I've been, I've been stockpiling free on. Thanks for it. We're going to need. We're going to. We know where we're going to Brad. Two hundred. I'll sell it to you for one fifty. Call me. I got a lot of free. Okay. So, top producers. Top producers for the month of October. We report two ways. We report year to date, which we did last week. And we report for the month of October or the month only. So, top producers for October. Top teams, two and two only. Number one, RJ and Jim McCarty. Two, Deb and Michael Martino. Three, Kathy and Bill Haas. Four, Eddie Levin and Sam Klein. Five, Tara and Gary Gaines. Congratulations. Three or more licensed agents working together are groups. Number one in the back of the room, Nicole and Bruce. They're on fire. Uh, of all the plans I've heard for next year, theirs are the biggest right now. Big, big plans. Two, Providence Group. Three, Becky Wynn Evans Group. Four, Alexander Group. Five, Ming Joe Group. Congratulations. Well, he's back on for the month. <laughs> Number one, Scott Mortower. Two, Rocky Kaufman. We got a big battle till the end. Three, J.M. Scott. Four, Lita Jordan. Five, Joe Cannon. Congratulations. <laughs> and 15 deep on the individuals. Um, a lot of you don't even know Celeste. She, um, she rarely comes in, but she does big business. Number one, two. Cynthia Pierce, you see that I avoided saying her last name because I don't <laughs> <laughs> mess that up. I was pretty, pretty good how I did that. Three, Rob Greeno. Four, Amanda Martin. Five, Lauren, Lauren Cowan. Six, Ziggy Goldstein. Seven, Susan Eschback. Eight, Mike Culver. Nine, Jana Huffam. Ten, Sabrina Hunt. Eleven, Oseanam. I love it. A lot of new names on this list. Twelve, Paige Pace. Thirteen, Katie Nelson. Fourteen, Bob Fasella and 15 Rashad Arnold. Congratulations. <laughs> very good month. Uh, looking very good the next two months also. So, um, certainty home loans. Certainty is in the house. Thank you. There we go. Good morning, Keller. Good morning. So, uh, I was asked a couple of times this week, actually, to talk about renovation loans and I know it's a it's a topic that if you've been around I've talked about it quite a bit but there's a lot of new faces out here there are less than 15% of the lenders out there that offer renovation loans and we offer five different renovation loans uh, from an escrow holdback the home style the 203 K a VA renovation there's a lot of different renovation loans out there in a time of tight inventory you having knowledge on how to leverage these renovation loans, whether you're a listing agent or a buyer's agent, I think is very, very important. I was a real estate agent for 12 years. I wish I had this tool, okay? Uh, we are gonna plan a seminar on it. I would love to tell you a lot more about it, um, but you really need to understand it. I know the hesitancy for you to use this is that you don't understand it. So. Uh, I can't stand up here in five minutes and explain everything to you. Grab Paul, grab Matt, grab me, 
pull us aside for 15, 20 minutes. We'll sit down and we'll explain the whole program to you. But it suffices to say that over 50% of your buyers, when they purchase a home, are spending a lot of money doing renovations after the fact. And if we can do those renovations going into the home, you're providing a lot of value to your borrower that way because you're saving them a lot of money, cash out of pocket. And when the stock market's at all time highs, and the interest rates on mortgages are at lows, where would you rather have your money? Okay, so uh, I wanted to get that point across. Please come talk to us about that. Uh, you mentioned business picking up. Three weeks ago, it was a little bit of a lull. Our pre-quals are up right now. Yeah. So more proof that business is picking up. Um, also, want to talk about something totally off topic. Yeah. <laughs> no, not for all. No, we don't want to talk about that. Um, well, you can tell me we're number one in Georgia this month. Uh, well, last month. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, uh, the lift team was number one in the company last month. <laughs> By a long shot, not even close. So thank you guys. But no, I want to talk about something that doesn't even relate to mortgages for just two minutes. You were talking the other week about knowing things around town so that you can have good conversations with your bars. I had a great conversation with Faith the other day um, about the North Georgia wineries. Hmm. If you all haven't been up there to experience the, the North Georgia wineries, there are over 65 wineries in North Georgia. Okay, And while I don't profess to be an expert, I have been <coughs> to at least 25 of them. <laughs> so, um, and, and they're just gorgeous and this time of the year this weekend is supposed to be wonderful weather I encourage you guys I know you got to work hard you got to do other things but maybe take some time go up there and experience one of these wineries come talk to me I'll give you some ideas depending on what kind of wine you like but they are just phenomenal they've got outdoor entertainment they're just beautiful settings the leaves are in full color right now so uh, get out and enjoy it it's uh, they're, they're just some fantastic places up there Thank you very much. I know that was off. It came out of nowhere, but you know what? It was uh, a bus tour. A bus tour. A bus tour. A bus tour. Somebody even asked me to do a bus tour. Yeah. yeah. The Human Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. So I guess you know. I guess the adage is you don't get your car fixed on Friday, right? So um, I guess you don't. Talk to your loan officer on Monday. <laughs> okay, so let's talk, uh, finishing up here. Mentally, how did, in your mind, what, what are you thinking is the highest, how are you trying to provide and portray the highest value to your clients? Because if you do that successfully, you will have many repeat clients and you will have many referrals. I mean, do you have a game plan in your mind like, I right, here is Bill Haas's gig. This is what we do and clients do respond to this. Here's, here's what we're trying to do in our business. Anybody? There he is, John Green, two awards today. Thank you, thank you. Uh, listening to needs, a lot of times we get so focused on what we think we should be providing for them, we don't listen to what they actually need and be able to work with that. Very underrated that you listen. There's nothing like you meet with a buyer, you listen to what they want, you show them five houses first time out and they go, this is dead on, right? Huge thing. We listen, mm -hmm. and we actually do uh, what we 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 hear. What else? I got something. <laughs> <for> you. <laughs> I got something for you. So okay. I did this last week because my I, I met some bars at an open house, and they were really busy the following week. But they had one house that they wanted to see. They couldn't seem to fit any time in there, so I was interested in seeing it myself. So. I went and I did a video tour of the house and walked down to the lake and kind of just 
chatted them up on the video and sent it to them, and they were like, wow, that was amazing. That's they waited it, yeah. too long to go and buy the house, but they definitely are working with me now looking at property. And that's but the unexpected great. extra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, I'm yop, a little something, uh, a little bit something extra for nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, wow, look at the effort here. And not only did I just go out there and tell you about it, or call you, but again, here's visuals or proof. Hey, we're fake. Yeah, exactly. FaceTime. Here it is. Here's this over here. Right? Fantastic. Thank you, um, Janet. Who else? I, I think sellers get so overwhelmed, even, you know, when you first talk to them at your first listing appointment about the stuff they have to do to their house. So I immediately start um, sending them contacts and people that will help them get the work done. And that just takes a lot of pressure off them. In addition, that really makes them like you because you've already gone in there and give added value. You've given them something. And, and that's near the top of the list to me. I mean, we are always, we should be a yellow pages of phenomenal vendors in all categories. And not just one, but three to five that are communicate, they do the job right, and their price is fair okay I mean that's what we do that is one of our top services and you can appear so incredible and so smart um, who was it uh, who had the chimney recently uh, someone in here they're listing something with the chimney Tony. on the inspection Tony. oh it's Tony yeah. Tony toys and um, they say it's 10,000 to fix it Okay, I mean, and again, when we can make people money, save people money, make their home more efficient. I mean, when he told me that, I was like, I haven't even seen it. I can't even, short of rebuilding a new chimney, that just doesn't sound right. And he got people for me and other people, and I think, I mean, yes, there were some issues, but I think the total gig from a quality person was like 3500 okay? So, hey, this is what we do, you're the hero, right? So having great vendors, always paying attention. I mean, when you're driving around and you see someone doing what looks like great paint work, stop, mm -hmm. get their name, get, you know, how much was this, that sort of thing. All areas, from everything to sprinklers, to hardwoods, to paint, to HVAC, you're really in a different game. When you provide that, they use it and it, it's good, right? Mm -hmm. What else? Thank you, Denise. That's a really important one. Bill, you, you said this. You hadn't said it. What the value? Yeah. Yeah, we, we're we like, uh, so we have T-Mobile for our cell service, and their big thing is the uncarrier. They're different. And, um, you know, it seems like, you know, everybody in the real estate world now has migrated to this whole team approach and team and group. And we're kind of the reverse of that. We're, we tell our sellers how we're different is, we only work with a select number of people and we provide real custom hands-on service. We're, we're the person you're gonna be talking to on a daily basis. We answer the phone, we're there. We're gonna help you get the house prepared before it's listed. You know, we'll provide vendors. We can meet them out there, whatever it takes to get the job done. That is a forgotten value that you get me, okay? I mean, I know the, the industry's going into teams and I understand all that. But a lot of stories that come to my desk is literally, could be a big team where you, it was a, a way junior person that was left to deal with something that was pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. Right, so that is a big value, right? Mm -hmm. What else? I would say tons of relevant info, okay? I mean, what Felix just said is a, this is a great topic that, you know, I mean, this is a big change in our world that will cost our people. So you're at holiday parties. Hey, Kevin, how's business? Well, I'll tell you what, I want to talk free. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, get to you. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know, a great, I know a great source, but no, I'm being serious. This is something that most agents are not aware of out there. And I think this is really something that can save your people a lot of money especially on things we're inspecting, we need to ask that question, you know, which way we're going on this? Is this the age of the HVAC unit is gonna be important moving forward? 
and just having the inspector like can you give a little talk about what this means if we need Freon that sort of thing or in your write-ups it could be important um, and obviously we're going in winter time where you're not even testing the air condition now but if we, if we were in warmer temps and we had low Freon listen that's a, that's a big number now right mm -hmm. so we need to I would learn to talk intelligently about this because this is this is an issue. This is a top issue out there that I don't think most people are aware of or most people can even talk about. The easy one. Easy one here. What else? Stating expectations. What does that mean, Rashad? Um, just through a transaction, whether you're working with a buyer or seller, kind of let them know, you know what the expectations that they should have from you and vice versa. Uh, meaning, you know, when you go on the contract, this is what the next steps are. Um, if you're listing a property, this is the day that it should go to the market, how we will follow up with them. Um, I think setting the expectations allows for you, but all parties involved in the transactions to um, have a more seamless, efficient process. Huge, huge. I mean, who here doesn't like knowing, being told what's happening next before you even ask? Great part of the deal. Really good, thank you. And I would say, uh, again, quick communication that's what everyone wants you're a pro you could be the most unlikable person on this planet if you respond quickly you are regarded as a professional so it's important it's important communication proper time to communicate quickly it's huge yes I was just gonna say um, I'm a licensed <coughs> professional counselor and so I have one client that I've been working with, and I've done more therapy with her than <laughs> with anybody, any of my other clients. But I, I just want to add, like, just the relationship piece is, like, really important. Um, it goes back to what John said and what Bill said. Like, listening and um, being responsive and being there and having, establishing that relationship is important. Very, very important. And I... There's a lot of clients in this room I can give you <laughs> <laughs> after this. That's why she got out of it. <laughs> so Rick, tell your story. This is interesting. This is kind of going back to we were we had a lead gen class yesterday that was uh, for a full hour, but we were talking about touching the important of touches. And tell me the story you told about your son running for president of his fraternity. Yeah, my son is a um, junior at uh, LSU, and um, he had told me he was interested in running for president. And he was working against <laughs> one of his really good friends, and if he didn't get it, he'd be the you know vice president or whatever. And I listened to him, and um, the night before the election, I said, "Do me a favor." I said, "Go to all the people that you think that you sold, or or and just touch them one more time. Just <laughs> hey, I'd really appreciate your vote, you know, whatever." And I said, and go to the new young young guys. They're not even supposed to vote, but some might do that. And he and he goes, well, Dad, they you know they they know who I am. They know what I stand for. I said, like, just, just do me a favor, just just do this. Where he called me back and the night after the election, he texted me, I won overwhelmingly. And I was like, well, there you go. Mom and Brad's advice. <laughs> there you go. Just staying top of mind is important. Lead gen and touching is an yeah. interesting game in that we don't. We, we do the touch, we don't get immediate gratification, okay? We don't work an hour, here's $10. Work an hour, here's $10. We send this out to our people, and it could be years. I mean, we all hear stories all the time of, you, this person never spoke up. You've sent it to them for years, all your touches, and they go, you know, hey, I, you know, I need to buy a house. I've been getting your touches all these years, yeah. right? I mean, that happens all the time. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Same thing, you know, we had an election last week in Dunwoody, and politics aside, whether you think he was the right guy or the bad guy, but the one guy, the guy that won for councilman allegedly knocked on 8,000 doors during the campaign. Wow. And a lot of people thought he was the underdog, but he won. And, um, you know, he touched. He made those touches. It's just top of mind. Or you'd be surprised if you are doing this three times a month, because what we want is referrals that if, if you're not there all the time in people's mind, when someone at work, one of your clients, some, one of their coworkers, you know, hey, my sister's moving in, they might just go versus, wow, you need to call yeah. 
Bill, you know, I just got his touch on Freon. He knows uh, <laughs> he'll take care of you. He won't, you won't get duped on your Freon in here. Uh, yeah. All right, so good stuff. Very good stuff. All right, let's see some caravans. What do you have? Um, Providence Group and the McCarty Group, along with two other companies, are having a five home uh, caravan. You've got multiple copies on your table. Uh, five great homes in Brook Farm, which is in the east end of Dudley. So come by, see all houses, and give us feedback. You have a chance to win two hundred fifty dollars. Nice. Who else? I have um, a three two thirty three fifty five Bachelor Street in East Point is three seventy five. I've got thirty three sixty three Bachelor Street in East Point is a four four for five ninety five. I've got 2563 Boulder Hill Court in Southeast Atlanta. It's a 3 2 and it's 300. And I've got 333 Stonewood and Griffin. It's a 4 2 and it's 189. It's absolutely beautiful. Excellent. Who else? <laughs> I got a uh, one bedroom innovation for 210. Everything updated. Hardwoods. And a 3 2 in Peachtree Corners. 3199 nice 32 ranch it's updated everything is nice great outdoor living space what school is that Kevin um, elementary I, I believe it's on the other side right at Medlock and uh, 141 okay. it's on the east side so we'll I, get back to you on that. Yeah. I gotta tell this story again we had our lead gym class uh, recently there's a lot of ways to lead gym here, this guy's gonna make a million dollars right here walking his dog. I promise you. Every time he walks his dog, he gets a listing. Right? It's the truth. Five in my neighborhood, yeah. There you go. Right. And then, you know, you said today, they, the one guy told you, you go, Jim, I like you okay, but I really like your dog. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's in Kansas also, so. And we close in December. There's a lot of ways, I'm telling you, if I like, I, these dog parks now, yep. yeah. that might be an hour or two every Saturday. Just sit on a bench with the dog out there. I mean, it's an easy way to start a conversation. Bill. Uh, we have a listing. It's not in the computer yet. It's a two-bedroom condo in Brook Ridge here in Dunwoody. Phenomenal lake view. Um, and uh, we're going to, you buyers, if you have anybody interested, can pick their own paint colors because we're going to do some painting. And the price is? Uh, 3625, two bedroom, two bath, um, Brookridge. Stepless living, elevator up, and uh, gated community. Mm -hmm. Cool, swim and tennis. Nice, who else? Jen. I have a 3 2 and the, you know, like uh, the office could turn into a 4 2 in Rex for 135 and a uh, Stone Mountain. Five two and a full unfinished basement for the low two hundred, and I also have a uh, new price reduction on the town hall at thirty one thirty Peterville Point in the list. Very nice, Jim. Jim Mountain Brook subdivision in Woodstock Town Hall three two and a half with a loft uh, two forty five nine. Nice. Who else? Okay. Do you have some uh, class after this? Um, no, um, I'm going to be, Pete had some car trouble, but he'll, he'll be here eventually, but um, we're going to help with some uh, command. I'm available for command help after this. But we have some dynamite classes coming up tomorrow, John Damiano, and these are one hour classes, always starting at 11. John Damiano is going to talk about building a referral-based business covering when do you ask, how do you ask, how many times during the transaction do you ask, because those are the kind of things that trip us up. Uh, that's tomorrow, Thursday, John Hahn from Bolt Group is coming to talk about bringing value to your buyers, how you can wow them, he's got all sorts of resources. Um, and Monday, our own Cynthia Pierce is going, again, at 11, one hour, talk about um, excellence in listings, how how the big dogs do it, basically, because she is <laughs> she is big dog. Um, and then Wednesday, uh, mock closing at Gannick. It's not on here, but it's the following Wednesday mock. So if you have not been to a closing, and I'll be reaching out to you. 
we're going to Gannick for this. Good. So again, remember, big roast. Just put on an extra layer of fleece. Come on out. It's going to be good. Adult beverages, bonfire, cooking pork, burgers, dogs, wings. You may want to bring a chair, like a chair. Yeah, bring a soccer chair for around the bonfire. Got cornhole. Got horseshoes. And we're going to actually, I think Bill said you're going to, you'll have your, up toward the house, your fire going up there too. So uh, it'll be good. Come out there anytime, three till sunrise. Someone will be there. Okay. And then I'll announce this for the first time. So two weeks from today is our. No, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday? Next Tuesday? Next, yeah. Sorry. She hit me. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So. Felicia has sent out the sign of genius to please um, sign up for your um, sides. I'm bringing broccoli casserole. Come on, mac and cheese. <laughs> so this will be this will be one of the best meals you ever have. Renee and Gannick provide incredible turkey, um, and it's just potluck. So everyone's bringing their best dish. Like if you can picture the workroom in there and that giant uh, oh, island in the middle is 100% covered with food. So you'll have five, six choices of everything. Corn pudding, dressing, it's it's really a great meal. So in here, uh, 12 to 1.30, um, actually, um, that's, that's commercial guys, that's actually 1 to 2.30. Um, yeah. So you need to be here if you're... If the commercial guys get in line before you, it's your finished. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys come with buckets, so um, be on time. We'll, we'll try to thin them off a little bit. Um, okay, so um, business is out there. Hey, find a way to enjoy the cold. I mean, it's going to be freaky cold, but um, just for a couple of days. So uh, enjoy it. Make make good of it. All right, y'all have a good one. See you now. Obviously, yeah. Hey, Jim.